running event of the day, the women's 400-meter relay. University of Idaho will be in lane four, Washington State in lane five, the University of Oregon in lane six. And Dan O'Brien, an athlete to keep an eye on here, Eleni Richardson, the freshman for Washington State out of Gladstone, Oregon. She is going to be very busy this afternoon. Well, she is. I think she's in five events today. Uh, she's running the third leg on this relay. She already has a provisional heptathlon NCAA qualifying mark. I like her because she's from Oregon, and so am I. But she's the only other athlete in the state of Oregon besides myself to have won four state championships at the, at the high school state meet, and she did it two years in a row. And a big coup for Rick Sloan and his club, Mark McDonald, getting the recruit out of Oregon. You saw Trina Higgins. She'll be followed by Latroya Mucker. Eleni Richardson, and the franchise, as Rick Sloan likes to call her, Fran Sewell for Idaho. Cassie Greenlee, Catherine Huff, Debbie Ogden, Heather Dennis. For the Oregon Ducks, it'll be Aisha Wallace, Alexis Yader, a freshman out of Stillicum, Washington. A little tit for tat as the Ducks get a Washington athlete. Hillary Holly and Taryn Tarver for the Oregon Ducks. We're going to see a lot of athletes today running in their spandex sweats. It's really cool out there, and... Uh, it's not very, it's not uncommon to see athletes uh, not stripping all the way down to just their uh, singlet and shorts. Pretty good wind that will be in the athlete's face as they come out of the block. Does that change timing at all? Well, you just, uh, if you're a disciplined athlete, you're just going to, uh, you know, you're just going to uh, stay focused and uh, get the baton around. That's the key. Safe passes, uh, you just can't fight the wind. Pretend like you're a knife cutting right through butter and uh, uh, don't try to change your former technique in any way. Athletes about ready to get into the blocks and get the running portion of this event underway on a cool day. Questions as to whether we'd be able to see a meet today with the snow that we had early on. I, I didn't have any question at all. I've seen uh, snowy days and uh, I have yet to see them cancel a track meet. <laughs> Wallace, Higgins, Greenlee in the blocks ready to go to start the women's 400 meter relay. Again, Idaho in lane four, Washington State lane five, the Ducks in lane six. Good clean start for all three teams and Atrina Higgins already beginning to make up some of the stagger as she hands to Latroya Mucker. Mucker, the junior out of LA, stretching it out for Washington State. Another handoff in the corner, and here comes Eleni Richardson for Washington State. Nice safe pass will assure a win for the Cougars right here. Francesca Green Sewell. And Washington State will capture the women's 400 meter relay. Washington State, Idaho, Oregon. Idaho finishes second. Heather Dennis on the anchor leg, and then Taryn Tarver for the Oregon Ducks. Textbook running by the Cougs. No mistakes. Go so back and take a look as Atrina Higgins got Washington State out in front and a nice clean handoff to Latroya Mucker. Well, the, the Cougs take a lot of uh, a lot of handoffs during the week, so there's so they don't get any surprises. Does weather make the handoffs any more difficult? Well, you're just going to be a little safer, you know. When you when you have this kind of weather, you're just not going to take as much of a chance. And it's a lot easier to pass the baton when you're out in front. You don't have all the commotion going on with people next to you. And as you mentioned, things pretty much decided by this point as long as the handoffs are clean. And the land handoff from Latroya Mucker to the Cougar freshman out of Gladstone, Oregon, Eleni Richardson. Eleni's really been a big inspiration. I think to even some of the upperclassmen, she came in and was beating them in the fall workouts and now we're into the spring, and uh, nobody wants to lose to an incoming freshman, so she's really inspired people like Fran and Latroya. Fran Sewell across the finish line for Washington State. Coach Rick Sloan there. And Washington State wins it in a time of 45-21, so the Cougars run it 31 hundredths of a second faster than they did in Arizona last week. More action to come.
from Mooberry Track in Pullman. Oregon, Idaho, and Washington State, the triple duel on Easter weekend. The Easter Bunny brought snow instead of Easter eggs. Hello, everyone. I'm Bud Namick, along with the world's greatest athlete, Dan O'Brien, as we'll check out the Cougs, the Ducks, and the Vandals. Washington State, led by Bernard Lagat, the NCAA Male Indoor Athlete of the Year. Well, Washington State has had such a great tradition in Kenyan running, but maybe not greater than this guy, Kip Lagat. In my opinion, probably the finest Kenyan ever to grace a Cougar uniform. What makes him so great is he's got great range. From the 400 to the 5,000, he is simply awesome. Great indoor season, like we said, he leads the Cougars today. Talk about the Oregon Ducks, you talk distance running, and today we're going to see one of the best out of Portland in a while, Marie Davis, who is coming off a foot injury. Yeah, but Marie's strengths is a lot like Kip. She has a lot of great range from the 8 all the way up to uh, the 5,000 as well. Uh, she said she wanted to break a lot of personal bests this year in all of the distances. She's the heart and soul of the Ducks, and uh, she's running the 1,500 and the 3,000 today. Your former coach, Mike Keller, brings the Idaho Vandals and a future Olympian in Tawanda Chawira. Well, Tawanda Chawira is probably the most consistent sprinter that Coach Keller has ever had. We won't see him in his specialty today, the 400 meters, but we will see him in the 1, 2, and both relays. He's got a lot of international experience. And also joining us today, checking out things from the infield, Tom Fuhrer. Tom? Well, the conditions in a word are frigid. It's more suited to an ice fishing tournament than a track meet out here. Winds coming out of the west, 18 miles per hour. Wind chill factor down about 18 degrees. It's going to be an incredibly difficult day for sprinters and distance runners alike. Here's what it looked like at 9 a.m. this morning. Snow was on the ground. And luckily, the people here at the facility did a tremendous job in clearing the track off and allowing for uh, conditions that will allow the competitors to do well. One of the big stories today will be the head coach at the University of Oregon, Martin Smith, after a long-term tenure by Bill Dellinger, the former Olympic medalist at 5,000 meters. Martin Smith will be taking over one of the most storied programs in collegiate track and field history, and he'll be making his major league debut today. Back up to you, bud. All right, Tom, thank you very much. Tom will be keeping an eye on things down in the infield, and it's a good thing he has a little less hair than you or I, Dan, with that wind down there. And the wind we have up here, we don't have to worry about the hair getting messed up, do we? It's All windy, right. that's for sure. Time for the men's 400-meter relay now. Oregon will be in lane four, Idaho in lane five, Washington State in lane number six. An outstanding athlete will run the lead leg for Oregon, Piotr Bucharski, followed by Jermaine Hanspart will be playing for the Duck football team, Jason Mayo, and then Howard Moore. For the Idaho Vandals, they have uh, made a couple of changes in their lineup for this one, as Ade Ayubige will be running in the first lane, Aguiera in lane two, Tawanda Chawira in lane three, and Martin Unger in lane, or in the fourth leg, I should say. For Washington State, Clay Thomas, Aaron Watkins, Guillermo Macias, and Anson Henry, the man Rick Sloan has taken to calling the A train. He has been uh, <laughs> quite a surprise for the Cougars as a freshman. Well, Coach Sloan really wanted to get out and get some sprinters. Last year, last year, Macias did all the duties in the sprinting, but uh, here we get a good look at Piotr Pajarski. And uh, he's going to do a lot of things today as well to help the Ducks score some points. He doesn't have a baton in his hand. they got to find one, the, one of the women. They have batons set for the women and the men. And when the women cross the line, they grab the batons from the women and they give them to the men. And uh, somebody in lane four must have walked off with their baton. <laughs> it's kind of like the old days of playing wiffle ball when we had the imaginary runner. They're going to have the imaginary baton. We get a look at Clay Thomas there for the Cougars. He'll be leading off. He's substituting right now for uh, Brian Lavelle, but uh, this is a good opportunity for Clay to get out and really show Coach Sloan what he can do on that relay. Young man out of Rochester, Arizona. Out of San Jose, the sophomore Aaron Watkins. This team ran together last week down at the Jim Click invite in Arizona and won the event in a time of 40.98. A little warmer last week. Yeah, just a little. Uh, I think they really ran well. To beat, to beat a team like Nebraska and a couple teams like Nebraska and Arizona that means you're really running well. And uh, both relays looked great last week. And I imagine this race today, though, is going to be a little closer than the women's race. And don't be surprised if Idaho sneaks in there and gets both these teams. Vandals with a good history of having strong sprint teams. Rick Sloan in his 26th year here at Washington State, 50 years as a head coach. Mike Keller, 26 years at Idaho. Well, 
Those two have a few stories to tell. Oh, sure they do. All right, the Ducks now have the baton. So Adi Yigby will get things started for Idaho. Thomas for Washington State and Bucharski for the Oregon Ducks. Bucharski's kind of athlete you love to have on your team. When it comes time for the duel meets, because he can do so many things. Not that interested in doing the decathlon, but he really is versatile. Last time these teams got together here two years ago, Washington State with one point victories in both the men's and women's events between the Cougs and the Ducks. Last year down in Eugene, the Ducks prevailed rather handily. I know Rick Sloan and the Cougars hoping to protect their home turf today. Absolutely. And one thing the Cougars have never done is beat Oregon and Washington in the same year. And he said that would be a first if they could do that this year. Men's 400 meter relay about to go. Again, Oregon in lane four, Idaho in lane five, and Washington State in lane six. This guy doesn't have his baton. start we'll bring it back it looked like the Idaho athlete a Deju Bay flinched while he was in the blocks I wasn't sure that was a false start but it was definitely a flinch looked like he was having a hard time getting set in that block and in fact they're gonna take that block out and replace it I don't think they're gonna replace that one bud nope that is a false start by the University of Idaho and we're under the NCAA rules where it's a no false start Woo! rule. And uh, which means which means you don't get a second chance. You see, he just flinched before they shot the gun. He didn't leave earlier, but he definitely flinched. And, uh, that was cause enough for a false start. Well, that's too bad, because Idaho really had a good chance to win that relay. Charsky and Thomas both wondering what went awry there. Probably uh, no the timing device or something like that because neither one really looked like they got off, got off to a false start there. And that happens from time to time. The automatic timing device. <laughs> Clean start by both athletes. The timing device probably didn't uh, go off at the same time as the gun. And we'll start. All right. And it was a delayed right. second gun, so Thomas going to take some time <laughs> to come back and make sure everybody's going to be ready to go. Has this become a mental game now to make sure you don't get unnerved by a couple of starts like this? Absolutely. Uh, the the disciplined athlete needs to just uh, you know start completely over with his with his mental with his mindset and and uh, you know, put those other false starts behind him. A lot easier in the relay because you don't have somebody right next to you. We'll try it time number three here. We have a race. Thomas off for Washington State. Bucharski for the University of Oregon. On 
the leg number two. Looks like the Cougs had a little problem, dropped the baton. So Oregon's gonna be able to walk in and get the points here as long as they perform the handoffs clean. It's a real safe handoff there at the 200 meter mark. Jason Mayo, the sophomore on the leg now for Oregon. They give it off to Howard Moore. Safe handoff there, and the Ducks are going to waltz in solo. We're looking for an exciting race, Oregon. but Idaho Falls Winning starts, Washington State one. problems with the baton, and Oregon wins. Let's take a look at what happened with that misplaced handoff. Well, Clay Thomas, the lead runner, having trouble. Maybe Aaron Watkins left just a little early, but he left him, whether he went out hard or left a little early. They still had time, though. They still had time to make the pass before the, the end of the tour, and but they didn't. It's Oregon with the win in the men's 4x100 relay. Up next, the women's 1500 when we return to Pullman. You're watching Fox Sports Net Northwest. WIAA, creating memories through participation in school activities, building better students, better schools, better communities. What technology combines the benefits of three distinct metals to create golf clubs with unmatched performance? Try metal technology. What technology uses the exclusive Carpenter Alpha Mirage face for maximum distance and pinpoint accuracy? Tri-metal technology. What fairway wood model has rocketed to number one atop the PGA Tour? Tri-metal technology. Tri-metal technology. Tri-metal technology. Tour pros are already going beyond titanium with tri-metal technology. Why not put the same technology in your bag? Call now for more information on the tri-metal line of clubs. When you call, we'll rush you a free one-year subscription to Great Golf Magazine and a free video that includes stroke-saving tips with Ken Venturi. What golf club will take your game beyond titanium? Olimar Tri-Metal. Fox Sports News Primetime. Let the party begin. The show that keeps you moving, grooving, rocking, and jocking. It's going to be fun. We were getting team up with Keith. <laughs> Kevin. What is wrong with you, boy? And our primetime players. We're hot. Move over, Barbie. I am not worthy. For fans who like it fast, furious, fun, and funky. Ouch. It's sports with personality. Uh huh. Fox Sports News Primetime, nightly at 10. Here's a tool so handy, you'll want several. One for the toolbox, workshop, camper, boat, car, even the kitchen drawer. It slices and strips wire faster and cleaner than any other wire cutters we've seen. Just turn and pull, and the wire practically jumps out of its skin. You get a perfect pigtail every time. Its carbide sharpener will put a super sharp, long-lasting edge on almost any blade in your home. It cuts tiles, slices and strips wire, it sharpens, and more. No wonder it's called the multi-tool. What it does will amaze you and everybody else. Now, for a limited time, if you take advantage of this special TV offer, we'll tell you how to get a multi-tool absolutely free. Yes, one free if you order from this TV ad now. Watch carefully. Have you ever seen anything cut glass like this tool? This is 3 8 inch thick steel reinforced plate glass. Let's see if multi-tool is up to the challenge. There you go, no problem. From thick glass to delicate mirror, multi-tool cuts it safely and easily. Call or send now. There's never been a better tool for cutting tile. You can get multi-tool for only $9.98. Why, this one circular tile cut alone is worth the price of multi-tool. At the other end, you'll find a blade so sharp it slices carpet effortlessly without rips or tears. You'll use it again and again because it's the sharpest knife you'll ever own. Special carbide grooves let you sharpen scissors. Even inexpensive kid scissors will cut like magic. Multi-tool brings new life to old tools, like these rusted trimmers. Dull metal particles fly off as multi-tool puts a new edge on this old hoe. Use it on lawnmower blades and axes. Call or send now. <laughs> 
multi-tool is only $9.98. Order two, and we'll include a third multi-tool free. Yes, order two, and you'll get one free. Act now. And welcome back to Mooberry Track on the campus of Washington State University on a blustery, cool Easter weekend. Bud Namick along with Dan O'Brien, Tom Fuhr, Washington State, Oregon, and Idaho. And up next, the women's 1,500 meters. And we're going to see one of the top athletes in this afternoon's action, Marie Davis, the senior out of Lincoln High School in Portland. Here's the lineup for this event. Annie Ebener for the University of Oregon is a sophomore out of West Covina, California. Andrea Jenkins, a senior out of Rathdrum, Idaho for the Vandals. Karen Knutson, another athlete coming off injury for the Ducks, senior out of Anchorage who redshirted last year with back problems. Andrea Lamont is a freshman out of Australia for the Idaho Vandals. Then Marie Davis out of Portland. Tuela Swetsram Grago out of Botswana for the University of Idaho and the lone Washington State entrant is April Gagner, a freshman out of Yelm High School in Roy, Washington, a 447-66 last week in Arizona. But there's the gal to keep your eyes on, Marie Davis for Oregon. Well, there were a lot of rumors this week. Everybody was hearing that she wasn't going to come up for this meet because she ran so well last weekend at Stanford, a 422, but here she is. Davis rehabbing a foot injury, ran a couple of meets unattached and actually last weekend her Oregon debut as she performed down at Stanford. Today's weather almost a it's a little easier for the distance runners to get used to. Still a delay in getting this event underway this afternoon. Looks like we're about ready to get going. Those sweats off. Washington State and Oregon. Last time these two teams got together here on Mooberry Track, the Cougs with a 73-72 victory, their first ever win over Oregon. And then last year down in Eugene, the Ducks winning it handily, and Rick Sloan and his staff not too excited about that result a year ago, and they'd like to change things this time. Coach Sloan only asks that his athletes really get out there and compete, and he said they got out-competed last year. With just April Gagner in this uh, event for Washington State, how important is it that April try to sneak in and get a couple of points in this? Well, it's very important. You know, Washington State got off to a good start with the 4 by one and, and at some of the field events already, but uh, April's a good 1,500-meter runner. She ran well at the, in the indoor season, and uh, I, look to her, I look at her to two sneak in there. One of the young Cougars, just a freshman. Be interesting to see with these weather conditions how many of these athletes will end up going in a couple of events later in the meet. Marie Davis, the type of athlete, she like to jump out and set the pace, or she like to let somebody else set the pace and then finish strong? You know, on a day like today, I think she's going to probably take it as easy as she possibly can. and. Uh, and uh, kick it in at the end. And I wouldn't be surprised even to let her see another Oregon runner beat her for the win. How much teamwork is there in an event like this? Well, Oregon's always been known for their teamwork in the distance races, but there's a lot of teamwork. I remember last year uh, at the Pac-10 Championships in Stanford, you saw the Oregon guys ganging up on Kip, and then some of the Washington State guys would gang up on the Stanford guys. So uh, there's a lot of teamwork when it comes to distance running. and and. Uh, Heinonen is a great distance coach, and he's going he's gonna to have these girls working together if they can. Annie Ebener, Andrea Lamont, Oregon and Idaho respectively out leading the way. You can see April Gagner of Washington State running on the inside. Third position as they make their way around the track for the first time in this women's 1,500-meter event. Now a little bit of a move by Marie Davis as she moves up front with Gagner from Washington State in second. The Vandals kind of sticking together, back in a pack. Well, that first lap might have been a little slow for Marie. She didn't want it twice to, quite to be that close when we get closer to the end. But there's April, Gagner sticking right with her. April's, uh, April's going to be a good runner for Washington State. She's, she works hard. Davis continues to set the pace. A little bit.
bit of a side wind, actually, in this situation. The wind kind of swirling a bit today. Well, you feel it the most as you come around the first turn as you were, as if you were coming out of the blocks in the 400 meters. And everybody, everybody wants to know what's, what's better for the wind, a heavier person or a lighter person. Uh, obviously, a, a heavier person is going to have a little uh, more advantage when, when it comes to the wind, but uh, it really doesn't matter. Tom Fuhrer's down on the track. Tom, what's the, we're up here in the wind. Is it any less windy down below on the track? No, it's still very, very windy. And it's interesting to see what Marie Davis is, do, is doing right now because she's currently, uh, this is unlike her. She usually likes to lead. And maybe what she's doing is trying to tuck in on that home stretch where the wind is the most severe. It is incredibly difficult when you think about any, these distances, both the 1500 and the 3000. You're gonna have to go four laps into that head, head into that uh, home stretch wind in the 1500, and then you're gonna have to do eight into the home stretch on the 3000. And Marie Davis is somebody who really is one of the top distance runners in the collegiate ranks, but one of the big problems she has, she doesn't have a strong kick. So maybe doing what she's doing here, she can develop that kind of leg speed that she's gonna need at the championship meets later this summer. One lap to go with Karin Knutson setting the pace and Marie Davis just tucked in behind him doing a little drafting. April Gagner has dropped back into fourth position for Washington State. The Ducks looking pretty strong to pick up some points here in the women's 1500 as you might expect Washington State trying to get something out of it with April Gagner as they're making their way. Dan, do you have a thought or Tom as to when Marie makes the move? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Marie and Karen just go in together from here. It's all about team points, really, and uh, I don't think the time is gonna be spectacular, so uh, each, you know, to each their own. If Marie really feels she needs the, the win here, fine, but uh, I don't think it's that important to either one. Well, and now you see Marie Davis, and it looks like the two of them are looking around, so maybe what she's just doing here is making sure that Oregon is going to go 1-2, and I think that's what we have here. Again, in these kind of conditions, it's really not, uh, you know, you, you play it a hell of a lot more conservatively. Knudsen and Davis for Oregon. Jenkins for Idaho. April Gagner for Washington State. 437 the time unofficially coming up we'll have the men's 1500 meter run from Pullman Time Life invites you to own the ultimate World War II video set. For the first time, see where the war was won and lost. In Air War and War at Sea, two gut-wrenching videos in one incredible offer. It's the World War II pack from Time Life Video. Never before seen footage puts you in the front lines of the war of the century. Air War takes you on white knuckle bombing runs through hostile German skies. War at Sea takes you aboard ship during ferocious firefights in the South Pacific. Moment by moment, the battles unfold. See them so close, you'll think you're part of the action. Take advantage of this incredible offer and get both Air War and War at Sea for just $9.99. That's two great videos for just $9.99. Later, you can preview other Century of Warfare tapes. There's never a commitment to buy. Cancel any time. Call now for the World War II pack. Call 1-800-847-3113 to order World War II pack for only $9.99 or send check or money order to World War II pack, Department 2, Richmond, Virginia, 23280. Call now. Imagine a washing machine versatile enough to handle the tough and the delicate that made hand washing a thing of the past, had a spin speed that cut drying time by up to 30%, could even sense the size of each load and adjust the wash action and water level to suit. In fact, it was the most advanced washing machine in the world. Smart Drive from Fisher & Paykel, the innovators. Fisher & Paykel, now at Howard Hughes Appliance Video and Sleep Shop in Moscow. Spring has sprung, just in time, too, for the Blue Smalls Home and Garden Show, April 10th and 11th. Get the latest scoop on decorating your home, planning a garden, or getting tips and supplies for those needed home repairs. Check out the cake decorating contest and candy making workshop on Saturday. 
And don't forget to enter to win these spectacular prizes during the weekend. I guarantee on results. You won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're going to see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun working out with Bowflex is. This is Fox Sports Net Northwest. And welcome back to Mooberry Track in Pullman. Time now for the men's 1500 meters. And as we expected, Marie Davis to lead the charge in the women's race. We expect Bernard Lagat to be the man in this men's race. Scott Johnson from Washington State, freshman out of Sammamish High School in Bellevue. Rob Aubrey out of Spokane's Mead High School runs for the Oregon Ducks. Eric Fredrickson for the University of Idaho, a senior out of Jerome, Idaho. Then Bernard Lagat. Ross Damon, a junior out of San Diego for the Ducks. Sean Vale out of Mill Creek, Washington, a freshman for the Vandals. Todd Humke be running for Oregon. And then Benjamin for the University of Idaho. Kenny is a sophomore out of Moscow, Idaho. And in this one, no Micah Davis. As the Davis brothers, Micah and Matthew out of Spokane's Mead High School, not making the trek here. They had the hard run in Stanford last weekend and a couple of other meets coming up that Martin Smith thought it'd be better to keep him home this week. Well, that was one of the rumors that was true, I guess. I was, we were hearing that all the Davises were going to stay home, but we saw Marie in the women's 15, and, and here we get a good look at uh, uh, Kip Lagat. Really, I think, untouchable in today's race. He's just been asked to go out and run the 15 and the 8, get 20 points for the Cougs, and uh, I think that's what he'll do today. The question is, is uh, who's going to be second and who's going to be third? Underway in the men's 1500. Boom, and out of the gates already. There goes Kip. NCAA Indoor Male Athlete of the Year. As he was a double winner in the indoors. Cougs had a very strong indoor season, and they're hoping to use that as a foundation for a big outdoor year. Anybody that you expect might be able to challenge Legat even early in this race, Dan? Well, Prosser, perhaps. Uh, he's uh, probably Oregon's best bet in this race. Actually, we've had, excuse me, there's uh, Todd Humke is filling in for Prosser. And Rob Aubrey not running in this one for Oregon, the young man out of Mead High School in Spokane as the Ducks have gone down to the two entrants in this race. Let's go back downstairs to Tom Fuhrer. Tom? Well, I, I know that Dan O'Brien had, had mentioned earlier that he thought that Bernard Legat may have been the, the greatest Kenyan uh, distance runner of them all here at Washington State, and I think it's instruct, uh, instructed to point out that Henry Rono, who broke the world record in four different events, went to school here, as well as Samson Kamabwa, a 10,000-meter world record holder, and John Yeno, a great cross-country runner. So I think that comment by Dan, and, and if he really believes that, really says something about Legat and, and how good he really can be. It's a little unusual these days because most of the Kenyan, good Kenyan distance runners now really stay in their home country because there's plenty of money to make on the European circuit uh, running uh, in Europe during the summertime. And so really Legat's presence on the collegiate scene and being as good as he is is really, um, is, is really interesting at this time and when, when so many of the runners can make so much money on the circuit. Interesting to see Martin Smith during that last little backstretch run by the Oregon Ducks. Martin there with encouragement and words of advice. As Legat looks pretty comfortable right now. He really does. He has such great range. When I call him one of the greatest Kenyans ever here at Washington State, he can run a 4,700 quarter or 47, 400 meter. He can run a, a 146 in the 800. And then, you know, he can also, he also runs great in the 15 and the 3,000, the 3,000 steeple and the 5,000. He'll do whatever is asked of him. You'll see him run a leg on the 4x4 and even in the open 400 meters. And that's, I really think his range and his versatility is what makes him so strong and such a, a valuable athlete to this team. Ran a 347.24 last week in Arizona as he takes the bell. Humke running second for the Ducks. And Ross Damon 
Also, Scott Johnson of Washington State trying to make a little move and passes Damon. And that could be an interesting little section to keep an eye on, Dan, because Rick Sloan firmly believes it'll be the second and third places that will decide who wins this meet. And Johnson passing Damon there. Absolutely, and I just saw Coach Sloan really working on Johnson as he went as he went by the finish line with one lap to go, saying, we need you, buddy, we need you. And he's starting to pull away a bit from Damon now. It doesn't look like he has much of a chance of catching Todd Humpke and Bernard Legat comfortably in front. Not exactly a day that is going to lead to wonderful times, but this will be enough of a run for Bernard Legat to net Washington State eight points against both the Ducks and the Vandals. 353-18 unofficially for Bernard Legat. And Scott Johnson with a crucial third place finish. Good job. Legat gets the congratulations, and we will see him come back. Back downstairs now to Tom Fuhrer. Interesting long jump competition earlier today. Hillary Holly from the University of Oregon. Very surprising. Has a 19 foot jump earlier this year, but she got one out in the first round at 19 feet three quarter inches. This is when the temperature was around 20 degrees and so anybody that doesn't even wear a long sleeve shirt has my admiration out there. So that was Holly's first round jump of 19 feet three quarter inch. Now this is Francesca Sewell, well decorated long jumper. This is her third round attempt. Of course Sewell has some of the best speed you're gonna find in a collegiate long jumper. And she gets out to 19 feet, 8 and 3 quarter inches. The wind on that was 3.9 meters per second. All of the uh, jumps were wind aided. Now, the big surprise here was Eleni Richardson. On her fourth round attempt, a personal best, uh, although wind assisted, 19 feet, 4 and 3 quarter inches. And she ended up taking second to teammate Sewell. Now, a uh, familiar person again, Eleni Richardson. At the same time the long jump was going on, the javelin was going on. And here she get arms one out to 141 feet 10 inches in the second round. And she was a close runner up to her Washington State teammate Anna Church right here. Church came through in the fifth round with a 142 feet five inch throw. And for somebody that uh, that's looking for a future great heptathlete, Eleni Richardson is your person. And we'll be back with the 100 meters when we come back here to Pullman, Washington. What's the best piece of wisdom to teach your children? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to dream, to ask questions, to learn. And when it comes to educating them, Key wants to give you the same advice. Key supports education from preschool to graduate school with investment programs, financial planning, and loans. So do not be afraid to ask. Key, help at every turn. Did you know there's a new technology that's exploding on the PGA Tour? What's your favorite trimetal? 17 degree. 11 degree. 13 degree. Did you know with Orlemar's new trimetal fairway woods, golfers are reaching more par fives than ever before? What's your favorite trimetal? 19 degrees. And did you know the trimetal exclusive Carpenter Alpha Miragi face, the longest hitters are even longer? What's your favorite trimetal? 7.5 driver. It's really long. Tour pros are already going beyond titanium with TriMetal technology. Why not put the same technology in your bag? Call now for more information on the TriMetal line of clubs. When you call, we'll rush you a free one-year subscription to Great Golf Magazine and a free video that includes stroke-saving tips with Ken Venturi. Call now and find out what's your favorite TriMetal. The whole set. Attention Go fans, stay tuned for a very important message. The PGA Tour is now on Fox Sports Net. We're talking live Thursday and Friday coverage. This ain't no highlight show. It's the big boys on the big tour where every round counts. It's the PGA live Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, did we mention it's live? The MCI Classic from Hilton Head, coming Thursday, April 15th to Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Pullman Women's 100-meter high hurdles. 
Let's set the lanes for you in this one. In lane one, University of Oregon will be Jenny Kenyon from the University of Idaho. In lane two, Rebecca Da Silva. Agneta Rosenblatt for Washington State, lane three. Katie Rowlett, Oregon, lane four. Cassie Greenlee, Idaho, lane five. Eleni Richardson, we just saw her prowess in the field. We'll see her on the track again. Lane six for Washington State. Melissa Abramson for the University of Oregon in lane seven. Samantha Cooney, lane eight, University of Idaho. And Lucita Zapata in lane number nine for Washington State. There's Eleni Richardson. A lot in common with my partner, Dan O'Brien. We expect great things from her. Run away in the women's Clean start. Richardson looking strong. Rosenblatt looking strong for Washington State. Rosenblatt out of Sweden. Richardson, Gladstone, Oregon. It's Richardson. Rosenblatt, it might be a 1-2-3 sweep for Washington State. It was tight between Cassie Greenlee of Idaho and Lucita Zapata of Washington State. Well, Rosenblatt had a good indoor season, but not a great indoor season, while Eleni came in as a freshman and, and did very well. Let's take a look again. Well, they're under the no-fall start rule. And you see them both hurdling at the same time. When you ever have trouble seeing who's leading in the hurdles, it's who's getting that lead leg down early enough. And it looked like Richardson pulled away just over the last hurdle. We have last call for the women's discus and last call for the men's shot put. Last call, women's disc and men's shot. Wait on the official results is Eleni Richardson. Then we also have results in the women's high jump. Dan, you were saying earlier when we were talking, you think she has an opportunity to be an outstanding heptathlete. Absolutely. She qualified provisionally in her first one at Tucson just a couple weeks ago. She's really a, a student of track and field, really tries to learn as much as she can about it. Great natural ability. And... Uh, she, as well as another uh, heptathlete from Washington State, Whitney Evans, both uh, had opportunities to go to other schools, but they wanted to be coached by Rick Sloan. Let's check in with Tom Fuhrer on the women's pole vault. Tom? Well, earlier this afternoon, we had another very interesting competition, and once again, despite the conditions, we had uh, some fine performances. Now, this is Karina Elstrom from the University of Oregon, certainly a contender to finish among the top six at the NCAA meet. Her first attempt at 3 meters 60, 11, 9 and 3 quarters. You can see the snow in the background. She gets over, nice clearance, brushed the bar a little bit, but she laid down the gauntlet. Now, this is Jeanette Martis of Washington State who's really come on the scene this year. Very powerfully built, nice run up, brushed the bar also, but nice, nice uh, elevation. She, on her second attempt, makes 11, 9 and 3 quarter. The bar goes up to 12, 3 and a half, 3 meters 75. Second attempt for Karina Elstrom. She knocks the bar all over the place, but it stays on. Martis was jumping at a school record. She was not able to clear it, and Elstrom ends up winning with that 12, three and a half. Bud, back up to you. Tom, thanks. We're getting set for the men's 110 meter high hurdles. And let's take a look. Eric Dudley for Washington State will be in lane one out of Seaholm High School in Bellingham. Eric Abel for the University of Oregon, senior out of Kalispell. Lane three will be open, and in lane four, the guy to keep your eyes on, sophomore out of San Jose for Washington State, already has the second fastest time in the nation as he won in Arizona last week. Aaron Watkins, a 13.77 last week, has already qualified for the NCAAs provisionally with that time. Also running, Will Dreesen out of the University of Oregon, Hillsboro, Oregon, Glencoe High School. Only man to score in both hurdle events in the Pac-10 last year. Nick Smith, University of Idaho out of Fairfield, Ohio, will be the only Vandal in this event. And Stephen Dwyer rounds out the field for Washington State, a freshman out of East Lake High School in Redmond, ran a 15-16 in Arizona last week. Runners getting into the blocks on this 110-meter high hurdle race, 42 inches to leap over every 10 yards. Aaron Watkins been doing that well, Dan O'Brien. He ran great at Tucson last week, 13.77. The key here for Oregon is Will Dreesen. Can he break up a 1-2 or a 1-2-3 finish by the Cougars? Watkins, middle of your screen, yeah, running in lane four, out Our quickly. And Watkins the Cougs right now have state. a 1-2-3 lead. Dreesen trying to close it. 
And the Cougs will get the sweep with Watkins winning it unofficially 14.06. Not a bad time considering the conditions. Not bad at all. He really eased up after that last hurdle too. So he could have had a could have had an official time of 13.80, 13.90, but uh, he cruised in for the win. That's something Rick Sloan thought that perhaps he did last week as well. Let's go downstairs to Tom Fuhrer who has the winner. Aaron, it looked like a very, very easy race for you. How did the conditions affect you out here today? There's a strong headwind, so that pushed you back on the hurdles a lot. And it's cold, so your legs can't warm up. So I feel it was a decent race for the conditions. I've really got a tough question for you. Now, I need to know, is, was winning this race a bigger thrill or beating Dan O'Brien in the indoor season a bigger thrill for you? Beating Dan O'Brien, because I last year I trained all year to beat him, and I never did. And this year I beat him, so training paid off. Now, we know that your event is very hot this year. Terrence Trammell is just uh, doing tremendous. But three years ago, another Washington State hurdler by the name of Dominique Arnold surprised everybody by winning the NCAAs. Do you feel you can pull the same type of surprise in Boise? Hopefully, I feel that. You know, I'm not going to predict anything because anything can happen. So I feel whoever has a better race, you know, I'm working on my side a lot better. That's what held me back last year. So I feel it will be a competitive at the least. All right, thank you very much, Aaron. Congratulations. Back up to you, bud. A sweep for the Washington State men, led by that man, Aaron Watkins, in the 110-meter high hurdles. We'll be back to Pullman in just a moment. You're watching Fox Sports Net Northwest. One of the most shocking incidents we have ever seen, making it today's Magnolia Moment. And despite the bite's unique location, doctors are expecting a complete recovery. I'm Tom Glasgow. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Honey, it's late. When are you coming to bed? In a minute. Just love this big screen. I'm Tom Glasgow. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Honey. Time Life invites you to own the ultimate World War II video set. For the first time, see where the war was won and lost. In Air War and War at Sea, two gut-wrenching videos in one incredible offer. It's the World War II pack from Time Life Video. Never-before-seen footage puts you in the front lines of the war of the century. Air War takes you on white knuckle bombing runs through hostile German skies. War at Sea takes you aboard ship during ferocious firefights in the South Pacific. Moment by moment, the battles unfold. See them so close, you'll think you're part of the action. Take advantage of this incredible offer and get both Air War and War at Sea for just $9.99. That's two great videos for just $9.99. Later, you can preview other Century of Warfare tapes. There's never a commitment to buy. Cancel any time. Call now for the World War II pack. Call 1-800-847-3113 to order World War II pack for only $9.99 or send check or money order to World War II pack, Department 2, Richmond, Virginia, 23280. Call now. This KNO people is just in a meteor the size of uh -oh. Saskatchewan is headed towards Earth and will hit soon. We're going to die the, no. the bad boy, Junior. Junior. Wow, we saved the world. Oh, yeah, save my seat. I gotta hit the can. Okay. Ken Griffey and the M's battle Frank Thomas and the White Sox. The series begins Monday at 7.30 on Fox Sports Net Northwest. Welcome back. You see the clouds blowing over here as it continues to be a blustery, cool day in Pullman. The women's 400 meters up next. Bud Namick along with Dan O'Brien, Tom Fuhr. The athletes get ready to go. Take a look at the lane. Sue Morris from Oregon in lane one. Whitney Evans, Washington State in lane two. Tish Bennis of Oregon in lane three. Lane four will be Janine Chorus from Idaho. Sharika Higgins from Washington State, lane five. Natalie Wright from Oregon in lane six. Brenda Nip in lane seven from Idaho. And Heidi Abersfeller for Washington State in lane eight. Through three rounds of a solid favorite in this jump. race, Dan? Tish Hannes probably is a solid favorite. We get a good look at Whitney Evans right there, a heptathlete high jumper. This is her first 400 of the year. Coach Stone really expects great things from her. And look at Sharika Higgins in lane five. She needs a breakthrough race. She's been here out of Oxnard, California. Her career best, 54.27. Hannes, the senior. Out of Baker City, Oregon. Run away. 
The first part of this race is the most difficult because you're running directly into that win. Sharika Higgins out to a good start, already making up the stagger there on Natalie Wright. Higgins out strong. Tish Hannes always a good closer, so watch her come on at the end. Sharika Higgins is running well at this point with just over 100 meters to go. Can Higgins hold off Hennis? Sharika with the slight lead and Hennis closing. Sharika Higgins in the lead. Higgins will get it for Washington State. Hennis just holds on to second. With Janine Chorus from Idaho finishing third. So another eight points for Washington State. Sharika Higgins, the junior out of Oxnard, California. <laughs> Men's shot put, Joaquin Olson for the University of Idaho. He is the leader currently. This is his third throw, 57-3 in his first attempt. Looks like a pretty good toss there as we'll follow the measure. He doesn't look too happy with it, Dan, but... Well, he's he's a 62-foot shot putter. Uh, he's uh, probably ranked number two or three in the nation right now. It's tough to throw shot put when you got all your clothes on, but uh, <laughs> 57 even on that third attempt, and uh, we've, got, we've got three more throws coming up in the finals. I don't think this guy will be happy until he throws uh, 19 meters like he did last weekend. Washington State, of course, B.J. Shane ready to go here. He had a nice hammer throw earlier today, but the Cougs without Ian Waltz, who's redshirting. Well, B.J.'s uh, not known for shot put, but uh, like Coach Sloan said, a lot of the second and third places were going to win this meet. So uh, B.J. and uh, Kevin Moore are both going to come over from the hammer and give their, uh, give, their, give their best in the shot put because we don't have Ian this year. He's redshirting due to that uh, hand injury that he acquired in the indoor shot put. Through 12 events, Washington State and Oregon, even Oregon with the lead over the Vandals and Washington State comfortably in front of the Idaho Vandals in this triple duel. Women through 11 events now, Washington State with the 19 point lead over Oregon. Ducks cruising past the Vandals and the Cougars in control against a young Idaho team at this stage. Men's 400 meter coming up now. And again, as Dan mentioned, a difficult start to this race from the standpoint that you have to go into that wind to get started. Lane one will be open to Wanda Chawira, who we originally didn't think was gonna run in this race, now is running thanks to the false start earlier in the relay. Guillermo Macias from Washington State in lane three. Howard Moore from Oregon in lane four. Ade Ajiigbe in lane five for Idaho. Chad Randall, Washington State in lane six. So a little treat for the fans, Dan, who are braving the, the weather here. They get to see this man, a future Olympian, perform in his specialty. Well, Tawanda's awesome, that's for sure. I, my, I'm most interested to see what would have Guillermo Macias, I would have liked to have seen Guillermo Macias' face when he found out Tawanda was running in this race. I'm sure he's excited because he's going to be pushed by Tawanda, but, uh, uh, you know, this race uh, normally would have uh, would have uh, gone to somebody like Howard or, uh, or Guillermo. Still important for Macias to keep his focus, however, in terms of the team battle between Washington State and Oregon. Absolutely. Guillermo needs some good competition, and he's going to get it today. It looked like Guillermo pulled up with a hamstring in the first 100 meters. Howard Moore running strong for Oregon early on. Question is, did he run a little too strong in the first part of this race? Here comes Tawanda with 150 meters to go with Ade outside of Howard. Good race in the men's 400. Here comes Chawira. 
We're going to go one and two with Howard Moore for the Ducks. And the Cougs lose Guillermo Macias to a hamstring. But with crucial points from Chad, Chad Randall there, second place points in the Oregon-Washington duel. Washington State, excuse me. Take a look, see if we can see where Guillermo Macias almost tweaking a little bit there and right there. He's Looked been like he's felt the twinge early. He's been nursing a sore hamstring this this whole outdoor season. The end of the indoor and the beginning of the outdoor season, and uh, has been pretty questionable the last couple of weeks. And maybe the cold weather got to him today. Chawira, the compact body and. He's a very efficient runner, and he always closes well. Ade had the lead with 100 to go, but Chawira got him in the end. Guillermo Macias being attended to by the Cougar trainers, and that will uh, cause Rick Sloan to have to plug in a couple other people down the road because Macias still in an event or two. Yeah, he's scheduled for the 200 and the 400. 400, 400, 4 by 400 meter relay. We'll come back. We'll have the 100 meters from Pullman. <laughs> How can you bring the world closer to you? Call Earthlink Sprint, America's leading internet service. You'll get direct high-speed internet access. More local access numbers across the U.S. and Canada than any other ISP. All the help you need when you need it. Oh, yeah. Now I can put my work out there for everyone to see. Call today to find out more about Earthlink. And if you act now, it will cost you just a dollar to try us for 60 days. Earthlink doesn't make you wait or hold you back. You'll get faster downloads, faster everything. Faster, 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 faster. All my favorite stuff shows up automatically. <laughs> Earthlink was chosen as America's best ISP by PC Magazine. So why not sign up now? You'll get 60 days of unlimited access for only one dollar. Join more than a million people who have already made the move to Earthlink Sprint. We'll even give all your friends your new email address. Just call and bring the world home. After all, <laughs> it is your internet. Oh, yeah. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with a bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now, you need to. Because if you want to lose weight, you got to add the muscle, and that's why you need a bow flex machine. It's like nothing else you've ever tried before. We've got over 60 exercises you can do on a bow flex. You're never going to get bored. You can do a full workout in 20 minutes on a bow flex machine. You're not going to believe how effective bow flex is the first time you get on it. Bowflex may look a little different, but that's because we designed it to function correctly. Bowflex uses power rod resistance. Bowflex power rods are so effective that Bowflex guarantees results in six weeks or your money back. Try going to the gym and getting a guarantee on results. You won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're going to see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun working out with Bowflex is. What technology combines the benefits of three distinct metals to create golf clubs with unmatched performance? Tri-metal technology. What technology uses the exclusive Carpenter Alpha Miraging face for maximum distance and pinpoint accuracy? Tri-metal technology. What fairway wood model has rocketed to number one atop the PGA Tour? Tri-metal technology. Tri-metal technology. Tri-metal technology. Tour pros are already going beyond titanium with tri-metal technology. Why not put the same technology in your bag? Call now for more information on the tri-metal line of clubs. When you call, we'll rush you a free one-year subscription to Great Golf Magazine and a free video that includes stroke-saving tips with Ken Venturi. What golf club will take your game beyond titanium? Olimar Tri-Metal. This is Fox Sports Net Northwest. Sprint time in Pullman. Time for the women's 100 meters, followed by the men in the 100 meters. 
Take a look at the lane assignments. Latroya Mucker for Washington State in lane two. Latroya, the junior out of L.A., and 11.98 last week in Tucson. Hillary Holly for the University of Oregon in lane three out of Woodburn, Oregon. 12.31, her best for the year. Catherine Huff from the University of Idaho is a senior out of University High School in Spokane. 12.15, her best mark so far this year. The franchise, Fran Sewell, Washington State out of Kennewick, Kamiakin High School. 11.68 in Arizona last week. Alexis Yader, freshman out of Stillicum, Washington for the University of Oregon will be running in lane six, a 12.11 earlier this year. Bethany Little from Idaho in lane seven. Atrina Higgins, Washington State in lane eight. Taryn Tarver from Oregon in lane nine. But everybody will be keeping their eye on Fran Green Sewell. Well, this is probably the fastest that Fran has ran at the beginning of the preseason. 11.68 last week in Tucson. She looks good. Clean start, Sewell out quickly in the middle. Latoya Mucker on the inside, looks like she's running a great race as well. Very close finish between Mucker and Sewell. That would be a bit of an upset, I would say, if, uh, if Latoya got that win. Take a look and see if we can see who officially wins this one. Well, head on, it's hard to see, but Fran just overpowers everybody at the start. She's so strong as she comes out of the blocks. It's not a great angle, but I think Latroya got that one. We got a good angle from up here. Looked like she might have had just a very, very slight edge, but either way, Cougs go 1-2 in the women's 100. Eleven point eight two unofficially the time right now. We'll get the official results in a moment. Right now, Tom Fuhr has Oregon coach Martin Smith. I'm with uh, Coach Martin Smith. First year here at the University of Oregon. Some high expectations. Obviously, a great program. What are some of the things that you're going to do uh, to uh, bring the program up to a little bit higher prominence than it's been the last few years? Oh, well, I think uh, I this first year we're just trying to get a lay of the land, learn the kids. Uh, over the next couple of years, we're going to need to work very hard at um, energizing our recruiting process and working very hard to teach the kids uh, taking the step up to be uh, more competitive at the Pac-10 and that next step, obviously, to the NCAAs. And that'll be a long-term process, like any good process, and we'll just be very diligent and work well within our framework. Well, today must feel like a very Wisconsin-like day. Um, Question for you, with uh, the kind of program that Vin Lanana is building at Stanford, uh, do you feel that you'll be able to compete for the for the uh, kind of athletes that you recruit at Wisconsin, some distance runners and the type of uh, chap of Prefontaine, Salazar, McChesney type people? We see those at the University of Oregon again. Well, certainly that's our commitment. Um, our focus is going to be on trying to find the right fit academically, uh, attitudinally, and of course athletically for the University of Oregon. And there are enough good high school athletes out there that the University of Oregon can have a fantastic okay. distance program and middle distance program and um, it's just a matter of hard work and intelligent hard work and we certainly aren't going to concede anything to any institution we know we have a long ways to go and time will answer if we're equal to the challenge earlier today a bizarre situation in the 4 by 100 relay a false start another disqualification and and your team looked like an easy victory, but then uh, apparently we're hearing word that there was a disqualification. That's correct. Our 4 by one was disqualified. We're looking into the reason why, um, and I'm not quite sure exactly what the situation is. And so before putting my foot in my mouth as a first-time guy out of the blocks, I want to make sure I have all the information and file the counter-protest and, and, and make sure, because clearly that's a very pivotal issue in a dual meet. I mean, it's a swing of an automatic five points that we had secured and now they're off the board and uh, and we just need to find out why before we move too quickly to judgment. Coach, thank you very much. Good luck with the rest of the meet and we'll send it back up to Bot. So we'll follow up on that potential disqualification and have the final story on that as the details become available. Now time for the men's 100 meters. Dan O'Brien, find out who the fastest man on the Palouse is. 
Martine Unger out of the University of Idaho is going to run in lane two. Clay Thomas from Washington State in lane number three. Jason Mayo from Oregon in lane four. Errol Aguilera of the University of Washington, of uh, Idaho in lane five. And the A-Train, Anson Henry, Washington State in lane six. Jermaine Hanspard from Oregon in lane seven. Should be a good duel between the two of those. And Colin Sewell, Fran Green Sewell's husband, running for Washington State in lane number nine. Hanspard, a football player who's helping out the Duck track team, and it should be a good duel between Hanspard and Henry, Dan. Well, it's not uncommon for the Ducks to use football players in dual meets. I'll never forget... Uh, I'll never forget a few years ago, athletes uh, with the, to the likes as uh, Pat Johnson mm -hmm. uh, and also a, a decathlete from there, uh, Muhammad Oliver. They've used football players in dual meets and Pac-10 competition. Henry with a 10-6-9 in Arizona last week. Hans Bart a 10-8-5, his best in this early season. Hanspard running next to each other. On the inside of the table. Unger from That's Idaho. That's Martin Unger on the inside from Idaho. Henry fastest State. man in the Palouse. The fastest man in the Palouse. Woo! Woo! Well, he's a long jumper, and I don't think anybody Woo! really expected him to run the 100 today. He ran Blue well indoors. But he was clearly inside. Second round and I think he surprised some people because he's running out there all by himself. How difficult is it for Henry in lane six, Hanspart in lane seven, to see a guy running in lane two? Well, you really don't. It's, it's, to, it's to Unger's advantage to be on the inside. When I run the high hurdles, I'd rather be on the inside. Man. Anson ran a great race, but uh, I don't think he felt the pressure from lane two. Henry had one, two straight, but that streak snapped by Martin Unger from the University of Idaho. So there he is, the fastest man in the Palouse for 1999. We'll be back to Pullman in just a moment. You're watching Fox Sports Net Northwest. Here's another Northwest story. I'm telling you, our Windstar handles like a luxury car. Performance with standard front wheel drive and a powerful V6. Mom, we have practice in 10 minutes. Convenience with dual remote sliding doors. Hi. I'm on my way to pick up the kids. Safety. Windstar has the government's quadruple five-star safety rating, the highest rating a minivan can get. And with a thousand cash back or zero nine financing, you can save over $3,900 in interest. See your Northwest Ford store today. Time Life invites you to own the ultimate World War II video set. For the first time, see where the war was won and lost. In Air War and War at Sea, two gut-wrenching videos in one incredible offer. It's the World War II pack from Time Life Video. Never before seen footage puts you in the front lines of the war of the century. Air War takes you on white-knuckle bombing runs through hostile German skies. War at Sea takes you aboard ship during ferocious firefights in the South Pacific. Moment by moment, the battles unfold. See them so close, you'll think you're part of the action. Take advantage of this incredible offer and get both Air War and War at Sea for just $9.99. That's two great videos for just $9.99. Later, you can preview other Century of Warfare tapes. There's never a commitment to buy. Cancel any time. Call now for the World War II pack. Call 1-800-847-3113 to order World War II pack for only $9.99 or send check of money order to World War II pack, Department 2, Richmond, Virginia, 23280. Call now. Fox Sports World congratulates Francis Zinedine's band, FIFA's Player of the Year. Cup hero and the heart of Italy's Juventus, the world's greatest players, the world's top leagues, Fox Sports World. Call your cable or satellite provider. Here's a tool so handy you'll want several. One for the toolbox, workshop, camper, boat, car, even the kitchen drawer. It slices and strips wire faster and cleaner than any other wire cutters we've seen. Just turn and pull, and the wire practically jumps out of its skin. You get a perfect pigtail every time. 
Its carbide sharpener will put a super sharp, long-lasting edge on almost any blade in your home. It cuts tiles, slices and strips wire, it sharpens, and more. No wonder it's called the multi-tool. What it does will amaze you and everybody else. Now, for a limited time, if you take advantage of this special TV offer, we'll tell you how to get a multi-tool absolutely free. Yes, one free if you order from this TV ad now. Watch carefully. Have you ever seen anything cut glass like this tool? This is 3 8 inch thick steel reinforced plate glass. Let's see if multi-tool is up to the challenge. There you go. No problem. From thick glass to delicate mirror, multi-tool cuts it safely and easily. Call or send now. There's never been a better tool for cutting tile. You can get multi-tool for only $9.98. Why, this one circular tile cut alone is worth the price of multi-tool. At the other end, you will find a blade so sharp it slices carpet effortlessly without rips or tears. You'll use it again and again because it's the sharpest knife you'll ever own. Special carbide grooves let you sharpen scissors. Even inexpensive kid scissors will cut like magic. Multi-tool brings new life to old tools, like these rusted trimmers. Dull metal particles fly off as multi-tool puts a new edge on this old hoe. Use it on lawnmower blades and axes. Call or send now. Multi-tool is only $9.98. Order two, and we'll include a third multi-tool free. Yes, order two and you'll get one free. Act now. Welcome back to Pullman, where the Easter eggs are hard-boiled and frozen. At Booberry Track, it is a brisk one. Bud Namick along with Dan O'Brien, Tom Fuhrer, are ready for the women's 800 meters. And we should have an interesting duel in this one. Charlotte Neal from Washington State will be running in lane one. She is a sophomore out of North Thurston High School in Olympia. Lane two will be Robin Sutherland for the University of Idaho. The battle should be between a junior, Alicia Buderbaugh, for Washington State, and the senior, Karen Knutson, for the Oregon Ducks. Knutson coming off a nice effort and a win in the 1,500 meters. Well, last year at this meet, we saw a duel between uh, Katie Crabb in lane eight. Now as they cut to the post, and Alicia Buderbaugh, Alicia coming out victorious in that one, but uh, Knutson's uh, an added element. Right away, the top three runners, Buderbaugh, Kraub, and Knutson right to the front. You're so cooperative. Buderbaugh out of Battleground High School. With Katie Crabb right behind her. Knutson out of Anchorage, Alaska. She probably feels at home today. One lap to go. 105 at the 400 meters. If they can hold that pace, it'd be a pretty strong race, especially under today's conditions. Alicia Buderbaugh spent six months in Mexico at the beginning of the year and came back and was in great shape. Right now, she's holding off Knutson and Crab, although Knutson making a move right now. About 250 meters to go. There's stride for stride as they go around that corner with just over 100 meters to go. It's a gut check from here on in. See if there's a benefit for Knutson to be a bit behind here with that win. But it doesn't look like, looks like Alicia Buderbaugh is gonna be able to hold off Karen Knutson and get some big points for Washington State, some key points in the women's 800. 209.58, that's an excellent time, especially under those windy conditions coming down the home stretch. So Washington State with the win, Alicia Buderbach congratulating herself for the victory. Now let's check in on the men's pole vault with Tom Fuhr. Piotr Bucharski from the University of Oregon. We have first call for the men's first triple attempt jump. is 17 first feet. Men's triple jump. Last call for the Bucharski passed to this height. He is the only vaulter remaining. Meter. 
this isn't uncommon for this isn't uncommon for Peter to come in at this height. Uh, he'd been doing a lot of other events. He got his run-throughs because he uh, hadn't come in after an hour after the competition was over. Uh, some guys made uh, some heights earlier, but nobody uh, nobody had made any heights close to this. I think the next closest guy was Lex Kalinich at 4 meters 90, 16 feet. Wicharski, the senior out of Warsaw, Poland. Career best of 18 feet, 2 and a half inches. Check back in on the men's shot put. Last we left you, Joaquim Olsen was leading it. And even though he fouls on his final attempt, that 57-3 toss that we saw earlier gives him the victory. And Idaho finishes 1-3 and three in the men's shot today. Just about set now for the men's 800 meters. Our second opportunity to watch Bernard Legat in action. Greg James out of Mead High School in Spokane, University of Oregon in lane one. Robert Harris, Washington State, lane two. Legat running from the outside, lane eight, as they make their move around and then all drop down together. Richard Gervin running out of lane six. Looks to be the man to push Legat today as they break for the post. Legat with the early lead. Get a little bit of a break when they get over into that corner with the field house blocking a little bit of this wind and the Martin Stadium as well. Gervin sneaking out in front of Legat for a while now. Gervin, senior out of North Ireland. The Oregon coach is really hoping Gervin will have a breakthrough year. He really wants him to do something here in the United States. He's ran well on the European circuit a little bit, but uh, has yet to qualify for an NCAA meet. Perfectly even as they go into the final 400 meters. Now Legat on the corner takes a step or two. Lead. And Legat really starting to stretch it out now. Well, he took a little look around and said, see ya. <laughs> Legat coming off a 152.75 in Arizona last week where he won down there. He, do, he does absolutely what he needs to do. And today it was win both races, get 20 points for the Cougars, and he looks like he's doing that easily. Looks like he backed off a little bit now, knowing that the cushion is comfortable. And Bernard Legat waves to the crowd as he comes to the finish line. Gervin second. And Idaho's Curtis Kunkel third. And we're going to get a chance to hear from the Cougar dual winner, Bernard Legat, in just a moment as he gets himself together after that 800 win. We go down now to Tom Fuhrer with Bernard Legat. Bernard, it looked like the most difficult part of that race for you was knowing where to stand out in lane eight. Yeah, exactly, you know, 800 actually goes like uh, lane eight and then I thought it was like a little bit I had up, up there. Then I had to be like, oh, they showed me that way there and then I had to just run so hard. Well, you've had an interesting last year. Let's go back to the NCAA Outdoor Championships in the fall that you had, and then, of course, the tremendous double win just a month or so ago. Yeah, actually, um, when I fell last year, it was a really a devastating thing, and it just kept on just ringing in my, my mind every time. That, hey, I, maybe I would have just won that race, but I just kept motivated, going into the um, cross-country and also going to Europe and coming back. And now when it came to indoors, I was like, I've never won any individual championship, so I was like, I'm going to get ready just to do something good over there, and surprisingly, I won both. Well, that was a tremendous double indoors. Now, you've run a couple 800s earlier this year. Are you going to do a 1,500-800 double outdoors at the NCAA meet, or are you going to go back up and maybe try to run a 5,000? Uh, I'm not thinking of uh, running, like, 5,000. Maybe, like you said, I might actually double, like, 8 and 1,500. It depends on how it is, it's going to be, because I'm trying to like qualify, go to a special meet somewhere, and then try to qualify and then come back when it comes to nationals and maybe run both and win both. Yeah. Well, congratulations. You continue the wonderful Kenyan tradition at Washington State University, and we'll send it back up to Bud in the booth. Thank All you. Right, thanks very much. 
Bernard Legat with the double win for the Washington State Cougars. When we come back on this Easter, we'll be like the bunny hopping over the hurdles from Pullman. The Avis Preferred Service System, linked by network. So without so much as signing a name, your car and keys are waiting. Still, at Avis, we hope the technology doesn't try harder. People do. Running late, Mr. Spencer? Yeah, huge presentation. How about I call ahead for directions? That would be great. I'll drop you right at your car. Speed and personal service. It's what everyone at Avis is dedicated to delivering. We try harder for you. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with a bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now, you need to. Because if you want to lose weight, you got to add the muscle, and that's why you need a bow flex machine. It's like nothing else you've ever tried before. We've got over 60 exercises you can do on a bow flex. You're never going to get bored. You can do a full workout in 20 minutes on a bow flex machine. You're not going to believe how effective Bowflex is the first time you get on it. Bowflex may look a little different, but that's because we designed it to function correctly. Bowflex uses power rod resistance. Bowflex power rods are so effective that Bowflex guarantees results in six weeks or your money back. Try going to the gym and getting a guarantee on results. You won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're going to see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun working out with Bowflex is. Fox Sports News Primetime. Let the party begin. The show that keeps you moving, grooving, rocking, and jocking. It's going to be fun. We were getting team up with Keith. Uh, Kevin. What is wrong with you, boy? And primetime players. We're hot. Move over, Barbie. I am not worthy. For fans who like it fast, furious, fun, and funky. Ouch. It's sports with personality. Uh huh. Fox Sports News Primetime. Nightly at 10. Welcome back to Mooberry Track in Pullman on the campus of Washington State University on a blustery Easter weekend. Time now for the women's 400 meter hurdles. Let's take a look at the entrance in this one. Autumn Wood for Washington State, junior out of Mead High School in Spokane in lane one. Melissa Abramson for the University of Oregon, the senior out of Springfield. Cassie Greenlee for the University of Idaho out of East Lake High School in Redmond, Washington. Randy Smith, Washington State in lane four. Randy from Beverly Hills, California, freshman. Lane five will be Mariah Bowden from the University of Oregon out of Medford, Oregon. Rebecca De Silva for the University of Idaho and then Nikki Booth for Washington State. Nikki is senior out of Federal Way. We get a good look at Randy Smith there. She ran a 61.95 last week at uh, University of Arizona and uh, She's somebody who I think also needs a breakthrough race. She's running some great uh, times in practice, but has yet to really run a great race this season. The only person that this field is missing is Tish Hennis. The uh, Oregon opted to run her in the 400 meters instead of her specialty this race, the 400 meter hurdles. Washington State women with a fairly comfortable lead over the Oregon women right now. Keep your eye out on Nikki Booth in lane seven, who came back after a devastating injury last year, a broken femur. She's got titanium in that right leg. Bionic. Clean start. The 400 meter hurdles is all about rhythm. You have so many strides in between each hurdle. You need to get into a nice good rhythm. And you need to be able to hurdle with both legs effectively. And Randy Smith appears to be doing that very well as she's taken out a big lead already. Randy Smith, Washington, Wayne Porter, Eagles, Washington. Smith running by herself. Almost looked like she had to chop her steps a bit before that last hurdle but still comfortably in front. Mark McDonald, a former 400 meter hurdler at Washington State University, coaches the women Cougars in the 400 hurdles and speaks very highly of Randy as she comes over, she comes down with 100 meters to go as we had a wipeout in lane three. 
Cassidy Back in the show of Idaho, Idaho holding on to second problems. behind. Smith going to stroll in with the win for Washington Smith State. Washington he should the final four. hurdle. And very importantly against Oregon, the Cougars will get a 1-2-3 sweep. Rebecca De Silva finishes second for the Vandals out of Black Creek, British Columbia. But a good race for Washington State in terms of their duel with Oregon. Absolutely. Let's go back down track side now to Tom Fuhr. Pole vault, and we're concluding it. Piotr Bucharski, the Dane senior at the University of Oregon. His personal best is 18, two and a half. He's vaulting at 18 feet, one half inch, third attempt, five meters 50, can't do it today. He ends up winning the competition at uh, five meters 40, 17, eight and three quarter. Back up to Bud. Tom, thanks. Tonight at five o'clock, Fox Sports News primetime. All the NBA and NHL action, and of course, Major League Baseball getting underway. And also a wrap-up of all the weekend golf events. We are there, Fox Sports News primetime tonight at 10 on Fox Sports Net Northwest. Men's 400-meter hurdles coming up. We'll take a look at the lane assignments in this one. Jeremy Amesworth out of Jerome, Idaho in lane one for the Idaho Vandals. Stephen Dwyer, lane two for Washington State. Another Redmond Eastlake High School graduate. Will Dreesen from the University of Oregon, the senior out of Glencoe High School. 52.99 is best so far this year. Nick Smith will run in lane four for the University of Idaho. Eric Dudley in lane five for Washington State. He's a freshman out of Seaholm High School in Bellingham. And Paul Summer for Washington State, a sophomore out of Clover Pike High School in Tacoma. Will Dreesen, the senior, the veteran, the guy who will most likely set the pace in this race, Dan O'Brien. Absolutely. I look to see a close race between him and Eric Dudley in lane five. And there's been a, there's been a good rivalry in the 400-meter hurdles between Washington State and Oregon, uh, dating back to Bob Gray and Tony Lee and uh, also uh, Mark McDonald and uh, Brian Wright had quite a few battles in their day. Dudley coming off a win in Arizona last week. And there's a look at Steve Dwyer, a decathlete. Uh, he had a uh, had his first decathlon of the year at Tucson when uh, Eleni and Whitney both got their provisional provisional marks. A young decathlete, but uh, came in to run this race, especially uh, 400 meter hurdles. Let's take a quick look at a team score update after 23 events. Now the Washington State men still in a very close encounter, leading by 10 over Oregon. The Oregon-Idaho match, a 12-point differential in favoring the Ducks and Washington State with the 23-point lead over the Idaho Vandals. Updating the women now after 24 events. The Cougs in command, 68-27 over Oregon. Oregon is leading Idaho and Washington State looking very strong against the Idaho Vandals. So with just that 10-point differential, this will be an important scoring event, as they all will from here on out for Rick Sloan, will he get his second win over the Ducks in the last three years, or will Martin Smith get a victory in his debut as the Duck coach against the Cougars? Bragging rights for the Northwest. That's right. Of course, you have to factor in the Huskies down the road when these teams will get together. Dreesen and Dudley, lanes three and five. clean on the first hurdle. Eric Dudley out to a good start. See those long strides down the back straight as he passes Paul Summer in lane eight. Now we're running the lanes all the way. The best way to tell who's leading is to take a look at who goes. running fairly really well in lane two for Washington State as well. Yes, he is. He hasn't had much practice in these 400 meter hurdles, but he's looking all right. He and Dreesen are stride for stride as they come down 100 meters to go. Dudley about 10 meters ahead, 
Dwyer staggers over the hurdle, and that opens up a little avenue for Dreesen. The Cougs look like they'll go 1-3 with Dreesen sandwiched in the middle. Dwyer going to have to hustle to get across that line ahead of his teammate as Dwyer had problems with a couple of hurdles. But the Cougs will... He fell twice, but he managed to finish. Perseverance of a decathlete, huh? I think so. Coming up, the 200 meter men and women on Fox Sports Net Northwest. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with the bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now, you need to. Because if you want to lose weight, you got to add the muscle, and that's why you need a bow flex machine. It's like nothing else you've ever tried before. We've got over 60 exercises you can do on a Bowflex. You're never going to get bored. You can do a full workout in 20 minutes on a Bowflex machine. You're not going to believe how effective Bowflex is the first time you get on it. Bowflex may look a little different, but that's because we designed it to function correctly. Bowflex uses power rod resistance. Bowflex power rods are so effective that Bowflex guarantees results in six weeks or your money back. Try going to the gym and getting a guarantee on results. You won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're going to see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun. It's hard on us, you know. It's the stop and go. You never stop. Traffic can be tough. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You got to sort of stay on top of it. It's tough being a cab, but uh, when you get that Chevron with Tecron, you know, it helps keep my engine clean. clean because it's a dirty job. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to do it. <laughs> all that no gasoline cleans your engine better than Chevron with Tecron. Chevron, simply smarter. I fantasize about Europe. The drivers over there are crazy, man. Is that right? Instead of wasting your time with this, there are better ways to get high in Idaho. If you've given up all of Idaho's opportunities because of drugs and alcohol, call now and find out what's your favorite try metal. The whole set. King Sonics, Tuesday at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net, Northwest. Oregon, Idaho, Washington State in this triple duel at the Mooberry Track. Pullman, time now for the women's 200 meters. And Dan O'Brien, I think this is going to be a heck of a race. We've got uh, some athletes that are ready to make a mark. Well, we'll see if Latroya, Latroya Mucker can be a two-time champion today. She won that 100 meters. And then we've got Tish Hennis, who... Uh, who was actually beaten in the 400 meters in the inside inside of her in lane seven? Aisha Wallace in lane one for Oregon. Heather Dennis from Idaho in lane two. Katrina Higgins in lane three for Washington State. Alexis Yater, the freshman for the Ducks in lane four. Huff out of Spokane in lane five for Idaho. Eleni Richardson lane six. Tish Hennis in lane seven, and Latroya Mucker in lane eight. Watch lanes six, seven, and eight. I think that's where the race will will be ran. Eleni Richardson, who has been busy for a long time today. Having quite a day. Personal best in the long jump, personal best in the jab, a good time in the in the in the hundred meter high hurdles. And uh, ran a leg on the four by one. Event number five. Halfway around the track. Good start. Melody Richardson really made up the stagger quick on Tish Hennis. That's a Trina. Higgins in lane three. Montreal Mucker and the leaders that come out of the turn. Mucker with a chance for the double as she leads on the outside. Latroya Mucker, junior out of Los Angeles with the double win as the Cougs go one, two, three against Oregon. Difficult thing to run out of lane eight like that, but she ran her own race, came off the, came off the turn and was in the lead. 
Final call women's 3,000 meters. So the Washington State women continue to dominate the Oregon women. Take a look. We'll get a chance to hear from Rick Sloan, the Cougar head coach, in just a moment. But look at Mucker, left side of your screen. Latroya came to Washington State to run the 400 meters, but her speed came around and great 100 and great 200 meters today. Let's go downstairs. Tom Fuhrer with Cougar head man Rick Sloan. Coach Sloan, you have to be real pleased with the way that your sprinters have performed today, especially that last race. Uh, the women's sprinters have been unbelievable. They've run so well. Our hurdlers all ran well. Uh, our men's sprinters are running well as, as well, but uh, Guillermo Macias got a hamstring cramp in the 400, so we're going to miss him. You know, the men's meet's going to be a real tight competition right down to the end. You know, you've coached maybe the greatest decathlete in all time with Dan O'Brien, but uh, Eleni Richardson, is she going to be the female O'Brien? I hope so. She's dynamite. She's Every meet we go to, she's improving in every one of her events, and I think she's going to be a real factor at the NCAA championships. And we saw Aaron Watkins earlier today. Uh, you pulled off a big one with Dominique Arnold in 96. Does this kid have a the chance of running? Coach McDonald and I both think yeah, that uh, Aaron has the ability to, to be a national champion. Right, we see in him what Oregon, we saw in Dominique and maybe a little bit more. Coach, Idaho thank you very much. Appreciate it. Back up to the booth. A lot of racing of a different sort. Racing of a different sort. The Formula One Championships live from Sao Paulo, Brazil. 9.30 in the morning on April 11th right here on Fox Sports Net Northwest. Men's 200 meters coming your way. Tawanda Chawira, outstanding 400 meter performer for the Idaho Vandals, entered in this event as well. Nick Despaltro, Washington State, lane one. Jason Mayo. Out of the University of Oregon, lane two. Tawanda Chawira will be running from lane three. Hanson Henry, Washington, Anson Henry from Washington State, lane four. Jermaine Hanspard in lane five from Oregon. Errol Aguiera of Idaho in lane six. And Colin Sewell of Washington State in lane seven. Interesting battle, lanes three, four, and five in this one. Well, there's Tawanda Chawira. He's a great 400 meter runner. And when you're in good 400 meter shape, it carries over. This should be just a fun, easy, short race for him. All right, Dan, what's the strategy here? He ran the 400 with the wraparound shades. He's shadeless in the 200. Strategic difference here? <laughs> Not really. You know, just uh, whatever he prefers. He's starting out in the shadows over there, so you don't need those sunglasses all the time. Good start by Anson Henry for Washington State. As well as Jermaine Hanspart. Oh, and there it goes, Anson Henry. With about 100 meters to go, pulled up. Tawanda Chirira pretty much running alone in front right now. Vandals are going to finish 1-2. And Oregon is going to get the points, first and third points, against the Washington State men in that very tight race. So hamstrings causing problems for the Cougars today. Guillermo Macias, and now Anson Henry. And you hate to see this, especially somebody like Anson, who's such a crucial part of Washington State. It's relay and their, and their sprint and their sprint crew. We just hope it's a cramp and he's able to come back next week from it. Anson Henry, the freshman out of Pickering, Ontario, Canada. Let's go back down trackside now. Tom Fuhrer with the latest on the disqualification of the Oregon 4x100 meter winning relay team. Tom? Thanks, Bob. Here's the latest on the relay situation. Martin Smith has not decided to push the envelope and actually do a counter protest. However, he does feel that the disqualification could, in fact, cause his team a victory in this dual meet, and as every Duck fan knows, beating the Cougars is important. Now here's something that's interesting. Considering the weather conditions and the fact that it's about 18 degrees counting the wind chill factor, the fact that the uniforms were not matching, in my opinion, is a terrible rule because of a performance issue. One of the runners was wearing tights to keep their legs warm, and for this ruling to be made is an absolute travesty and is a black mark on collegiate track and field, and I'd actually like to get Dan O'Brien's opinion on this as a world-class athlete. 
Well, this is a rule that's enforced at the NCAA championship level, but it's not really a rule that you think about on a week-to-week -week basis. And so I think for this rule to really be enforced wholeheartedly this weekend is, is, uh, is very difficult to, to always keep in mind and remember. And it will definitely have a factor in this meet. Washington State was ahead 54-53 before the scoring in the 200, and with Oregon getting first and third there, they're now up by two points, but that's five points taken away from the Oregon Ducks that would have given them a little bigger cushion. The women's 300 meters, our next event. Let's take a look at the lane assignments. Jamie Stone for the University of Idaho out of Deer Park, Washington. Heather McMahon from the University of Oregon out of Bend, Oregon. She's a senior. Tia Tarusio from the University of Idaho from Walla Walla, a senior. For Washington State, Crystal Melgasini. Crystal is a sophomore out of Snohomish. Katie Crabb will be in the 3000 for the University of Oregon. Also for the University of Idaho, Tarita Carruthers. Carruthers, a freshman out of Jefferson, Oregon. Megan Maynard for Washington State. And Marie Davis, who has won, well, she didn't win the 1500 earlier. She was right there with her teammate, Karin Knutson. She could have won it, though. Could have won it, yep. All right. Megan Maynard from Washington State uh, acquired All-American status this year in the cross-country season. Everybody was real proud of her. Nobody willing to jump out early. A day like today, going to kind of go with the crowd for a while. Interesting to see uh, Crab in this race, especially after, uh, after shortly half an hour, 45 minutes after running the 800 meters. Coach Heinen and putting everybody to work. We'll come back in a moment. We will have the finish of the women's 3,000 meters. You're watching track and field from Pullman, Washington on Fox Sports Net Northwest. Here's a tool so handy you'll want several. One for the toolbox, workshop, camper, boat, car, even the kitchen drawer. It slices and strips wire faster and cleaner than any other wire cutters we've seen. Just turn and pull, and the wire practically jumps out of its skin. You get a perfect pigtail every time. Its carbide sharpener will put a super sharp, long-lasting edge on almost any blade in your home. It cuts tile, slices and strips wire. It sharpens, and more. No wonder it's called the multi-tool. What it does will amaze you and everybody else. Now, for a limited time, if you take advantage of this special TV offer, we'll tell you how to get a multi-tool absolutely free. Yes, one free if you order from this TV ad now. Watch carefully. Have you ever seen anything cut glass like this tool? This is 3 8 inch thick steel reinforced plate glass. Let's see if multi-tool is up to the challenge. There you go. No problem. From thick glass to delicate mirror, multi-tool cuts it safely and easily. Call or send now. There's never been a better tool for cutting tile. You can get multi-tool for only $9.98. Why, this one circular tile cut alone is worth the price of multi-tool. At the other end, you'll find a blade so sharp it slices carpet effortlessly without rips or tears. You'll use it again and again because it's the sharpest knife you'll ever own. Special carbide grooves let you sharpen scissors. Even inexpensive kid scissors will cut like magic. Multi-tool brings new life to old tools, like these rusted trimmers. Dull metal particles fly off as multi-tool puts a new edge on this old hoe. Use it on lawnmower blades and axes. Call or send now. Multi-tool is only $9.98. Order two, and we'll include a third multi-tool free. Yes, order two and you'll get one free. Act now. Women's 3,000 meters. Marie Davis has just taken the lead from Crystal Magasini of Washington State on this lap and starting to stretch it out. Katie Crabb running third for Oregon. Well, that's actually Maynard, Maynard, Megan Maynard in second position there, and she's got to be feeling great about uh, running there with Marie Davis. This could be a big confidence builder for her. She's always had the potential. You know, I think she knows she can do it now. We'll see how she can finish up here. So Marie Davis able to stretch it out a little bit. Megan Maynard and then Katie Crabb as we finish up the women's 3,000 meters. Katie Crabb 
Marie Davis looking a lot like Kip Lagat. She just kind of took off and left the field when she wanted to. Once this meet is over, the Oregon women will get on a bus and take the bus ride back to Eugene. Their coach, Tom Heinenen, wanted them to have the bus ride, so they were home tomorrow for Easter while the men flew up. And they'll fly home tomorrow, but won't be able to get out of here tonight. Not uncommon to get on the bus and go home so you can rest all day Sunday and get back to work on a Monday. So Marie Davis captures the women's 3,000 for the Oregon Ducks. Megan Maynard of Washington State second. And Katie Kraft from Oregon will finish third for the Ducks. Andrea Thornton is your leader. She has a mark of Tomorrow, opening night for the Seattle Mariners as they take on the Chicago White Sox from the Kingdom. Last time, they'll open a season in the Kingdom. Game time, 7.30. Our coverage begins at 6.30 with the Mariner warm-up right here on Fox Sports Net Northwest. Baseball tomorrow, track and field today. The men's 3,000 meters ongoing, and there is the story Taking the lead is Bernard Legat. He was not supposed to run in this race, Dan O'Brien, but with, with a very tight men's race between Washington State and Oregon, Legat goes for the triple. Well, it's like I said before, he's going to do anything he can to help this team, and he was only scheduled for two events to get the 20 points, but here we see him in the 3,000 meters. I can remember a day when I was at Idaho when Coach would throw me into an event towards the last part of the meet, and I was more than happy to do it for the team. Interesting in that point standings as you see Legat with the lead, then three Oregon Ducks, and then the other two Cougars in this race, Oscar Franco Parra and Chris Charles. Franco Parra had the lead a short while ago, but it looks like if Legat is able to hold on, those become very big points for Washington State. Tom Fuhr. Dan O'Brien, from a competitive world-class perspective, Bernard Legat's got bigger races this summer. He's going to have the Kenyan Trials. He's going to have the World Championships potentially as well as the NCAAs. What kind of a triple like this, what does it do to a guy? Well, I think Kip's a team player. He's doing it for the team, the people that he trains with and hangs out with every day. But, uh, you know, this is the competitiveness of a Coach Sloan. Coach wants to win the dual meet just as bad as he wants Dan O'Brien to win a World Championship. So he's pulling out all the stops here with Kip Legat. Coming into this race, the Cougars were in front 66 to 59 after the sweep of the triple jump. You see the Cougar team out to push Legat on, and look at this, the Cougs get a little surprise, and they're gonna get first and second in this race as Chris Charles with a strong kick, and that is huge. That is absolutely huge for Chris Charles. It was looking like the Cougars were going to get five points to Oregon's four in this rate. Now the Cougars get eight to Oregon's one. And that makes it 74 to 60 with the discus and the men's relay still to go. Let's go downstairs to Tom Fuhr. In this age of uh, me first athletes, it's really an impressive performance that a world-class athlete like you would go for a triple to do it for the team. Can you tell us what motivated you to do that today? Actually, uh, the thing that actually motivated me today is like, I knew this is, this is the last, the last uh, long distance meet, I mean, uh, event during this race, this meet today. I don't know, it's like, let me just go and uh, do something for the team. Because my coach told me right there, man, it's up to you now to do something for us because we were running short of something small right there. So that's why he told me to just come and do it. So I was like, let me do it yes. and do it for the team. Did you have any idea when you came to the track today that you'd have to come out and run this race? I mean, when you ran the, eight, the 1500, did you think it was the 800? Did you think it was all over? Uh, not at all. I thought I was running only the 800 and uh, maybe actually the 15. But when I ran 15, I didn't know I was going to run the, the 3000. Until the last minute when coach told me, oh man, we need you really bad. So that's why I was like, okay, let me just run for the team too right here. Yep. Bernard, congratulations. Tremendous triple. Great story. Back up to you, Bob. Bernard Legat and the Cougars now with a 14-point lead with two events still to be scored. We'll be back to Pullman. You're watching Fox Sports Net Northwest. <laughs> I'll get
Can you bring the world closer to you? Call Earthlink Sprint, America's leading internet service. You'll get direct, high-speed internet access. More local access numbers across the U.S. and Canada than any other ISP. All the help you need, when you need it. Oh, yeah. Now I can put my work out there for everyone to see. Call today to find out more about Earthlink. And if you act now, it will cost you just a dollar to try us for 60 days. Earthlink doesn't make you wait or hold you back. You'll get faster downloads, faster everything. Faster, 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 faster. All of my favorite stuff shows up automatically. <laughs> Earthlink was chosen as America's best ISP by PC Magazine. So why not sign up now? You'll get 60 days of unlimited access for only $1. Join more than a million people who have already made the move to Earthlink Sprint. We'll even give all your friends your new email address. Just call and bring the world home. After all, <laughs> it is your internet. Oh, yeah. Did you know there's a new technology that's exploding on the PGA Tour? What's your favorite trimetal? 17 degree. 11 degree. 13 degree. Did you know with Orlemar's new trimetal fairway woods, golfers are reaching more par fives than ever before? What's your favorite trimetal? 19 degrees. And did you know with the trimetal's exclusive Carpenter Alpha Mirage face, the longest hitters are even longer? What's your favorite trimetal? 7.5 driver. It's really long. Tour pros are already going beyond titanium with tri-metal technology. Why not put the same technology in your bag? Call now for more information on the tri-metal line of clubs. When you call, we'll rush you a free one-year subscription to Great Golf Magazine and a free video that includes stroke-saving tips with Ken Venturi. Call now and find out what's your favorite tri-metal. The whole set. Final running event of the day, the men's 4x400 meter relay. Still a close team race between Washington State and Oregon overall, but no race here as Jermaine Hanspard with a great opening leg for the Oregon Ducks and a huge lead in this relay. Well, that's Howard Moore taking it out to a big lead. It's not quite the day he expected. No uh, disqualification in the 4x1 relay. And then, uh, and then second place only in the 400 meters. But uh, he looks to be getting some good work in. I hear the coaches hollering down there, and uh, I think they, I think they want to run a good time. So Oregon with the commanding lead in this one, and Tawanda Chawira running the anchor leg for the Idaho Vandals, and Idaho will end up with second place in this relay. So Oregon will get the five points. No disqualification this time. Everybody wearing the same uniform made the officials happy. We'll let you know what the scoring is in the men's discus and some final thoughts when we come back. You're watching Fox Sports Net Northwest. Some single moms think it's tough taking care of a car. A car's easy. Being a little league mom, now that's tough. Every time my Bobby steps to the plate, every time the coach looks at him, I get nervous. Used to get nervous about cars, too. Now I go to Al's Auto Supply for the right parts, the right price, and smart advice from Al's parts pros. Al's does whatever it takes to get a Little League mom back on the road again and help keep my life in order. Slide, Bobby, slide! Palm Harbor Home. Welcome to Palm Harbor Village. We want a home of our own, but we don't have a big allowance. Then come to Palm Harbor Village and own a spacious, energy-efficient Palm Harbor home for just $1,000 down. Zero down if you own your own land. Wow, what suspense. <laughs> your own beautiful Palm Harbor home for just $1,000 down, as low as $348 a month. And there's room for the whole family. Palm Harbor Homes, more home for your money. Time Life invites you to own the ultimate world. There's a naval battle being fought on land by forces armed only with commitment and compassion. Because every day, Navy volunteers combat homelessness, hunger, loneliness, and illiteracy by initiating community programs that touch people's lives. And while their exploits aren't honored with medals, it's hard to imagine a more moving tribute. Carpet, vinyl, ceramic tile, hardwood floor, laminate. Shop the rest. Then, shop the best. Saunders Floor Covering. Quality work since 1949. Hi, I'm Avi, the Good Deal Guy from Saunders. Take a look at some of the quality work we've done. No matter what the sale or special is, I guarantee we meet to beat all prices. Don't wait for clearance sales. Don't wait for special deals.
Virginia, 23280. Call now. This is Fox Sports Net Northwest. The men's discus and women's hammer now completed. We can now give you the final scores. The women's score, look at that. Washington State, 114 to 40. Just their second win ever over the Oregon Ducks, and that only other win was by one point. Oregon with the win over Idaho, and Idaho and Washington State, the women, with the victory. And in the men's results, the Washington State men get their second win in the last three years over the Ducks, 83-65. to Oregon over Idaho by 21 points, and the Cougs with the win over the Idaho Vandals. Let's go down now to Dan and Tom for their final thoughts on today's action. Well, Dan, it's April. What are we doing? It's 18 degrees out here. Oof, it's really cold. I'll tell you, uh, I'm, I think when I train in this sort of weather, I'm a lot more prepared when I go over to Europe and compete. Uh, when I'm at the U.S. Championships, like in the Sacramento 95, and it was freezing, you know, and you have headwinds, sidewinds, crosswinds. Uh, I think that's one of the benefits of training up here, but it was a cold April day. Now we know why you're the world's greatest athlete. you got to confront the world's greatest elements. Eleni Richardson, big day for her, four personal bests. It really was a big day for her. She did five events and uh, got off the bat. You know, she started off today, got right off the bat with two personal bests, one in the long jump, one in the javelin. What a great way to start. And I know that's just exactly what Coach Sloan wanted. And uh, I think, you know, it takes a lot of guts for a girl from the state of Oregon to come to Washington State just to come train with a good group and a coach like Rick Sloan. And the story on the men's side, Bernard Legat, three races, three wins. You know, what can you say about Bernard that, you know, hasn't already been said. He's absolutely awesome. But I don't really think uh, it shows his competitiveness. I think it shows Coach Sloan's competitiveness. He didn't have to put Bernard in that last race, but he said, hey, the team needs you. Bernard was willing to do whatever it took. And uh, Coach Sloan wants to win a dual meet uh, uh, just as bad as, you know, just I think just as bad as I do, but uh, even, even more so against Oregon. His goals this year were to beat Oregon men and women and Washington men and women, and he's got a chance to do that. Very good. Back up to Bud. All right, Dan and Tom, thank you very much. And special thanks to our entire Fox Sport Net Northwest crew for braving the elements. For Dan O'Brien and Tom Fuhrer, I'm Bud Namick. The Cougs with the victory over the Idaho Vandals and the Oregon Ducks. The next track and field meet the Pepsi Invitational from Eugene, Monday, May 10th at 2 o'clock. You've been watching Oregon, Idaho, Washington State track and field on Fox Sports Net Northwest. Stay tuned. Coming up next, English Premier League Soccer.